working on is the Little River, which has actually had three dams taken out since 1998. So as scientists, we can't just assume that this is a good thing, so we wanted to study the impact that it's having. Dams provide reliable water sources, clean energy, flood control, and recreation. However, many dams no longer serve their intended purpose, and failures are a major safety risk. Dams can negatively influence riverine organisms as they alter flow, water temperature, and habitat connectivity. Removal of small dams is increasing, but research on riverine organisms following removals is limited. Our study focuses on migratory fish. The Little River is a tributary to the Neuse River, with the two joining near Goldsboro, North Carolina. Their confluence is 212 river kilometers from the Pamlico Sound. Three small dams have been removed, starting with Cherry Hospital Dam in 1998. This dam, located only three river kilometers from the Neuse River, may have blocked fish from using most of the Little River. Rains Mill Dam at River Kilometer 37 was removed in 1999. At River Kilometer 56, Lowell Mill Dam was removed in 2005. The Goldsboro Water Treatment Plant Dam at River Kilometer 7 was partially removed by notching the middle of the structure. Dams are still present, with Atkinson Mill Dam being the most downstream dam at river kilometer 82. American shad are an anadromous species, primarily growing and maturing in the ocean, but migrating into rivers to spawn. Dam removals may benefit them by restoring access to historic spawning and nursery habitat. Potomodromous species may also benefit from dam removals as they make distinct migrations entirely in fresh water. These species include catfish, gizzard shad, and red horses. We're doing this to see if the populations are increasing following dam removals, also how much of the river they're using, if they're using restored habitat. Uh, we're also interested in, in migratory cues, so what causes them to move upstream or downstream. We installed a fish weir spanning the river channel at the Cherry Hospital dam removal site. Fish immigrating from the Noose River were funneled into the upstream cage, while fish emigrating from the Little River were funneled into a floating downstream cage. Our weir was composed of a resistance board weir and traditional picket weir. Resistance board weirs allow boats to pass, withstand higher flows, and are much easier to clear debris from than picket weir. We checked the cages throughout the day and into the night, seven days a week, from March through May. Fish were removed from the cages with dip nets, scanned for a pit tag, measured, weighed, pit tagged, and then released. Passive integrated transponder, we call it pit tag for short, it has to be energized, and then when there's an energy source it emits a radio frequency with a nine digit number. So a small incision and then we insert the tag into their body cavity. That's with it. For other species, we scraped away a few scales from the side of their body before making an incision and inserting the pit tag. Fish identification is lifelong with pit tags since they do not have batteries. They also are inexpensive, less than $3 each, allowing us to study hundreds of fish in multiple species. Another benefit of pit tags is that they can be detected by pit antennas. We installed antennas at multiple locations, including former dam sites, to monitor the migrations and habitat use of pit tag fish in the Little River. Pretend this is a fish. As the fish is moving through, we just got a record of it. So this one reads pretty far out and also above, so when the water comes up, we can still get fish even when the water comes up that high. Our antennas were comprised of a reader and data logger powered by two 12 volt batteries, a tuner box, and then the actual antenna, a loop of eight gauge audio cable that spanned the river channel and was held in place by synthetic cable and stakes. We visited each antenna twice a week to download data, change batteries, and conduct general maintenance. 
River Flow, shown in orange, strongly influenced the migration of American Shad, Gizzard Shad, and Flathead Catfish. At this and other antennas, migration was common during high flows, but rare during low flows. Habitat restored by dam removals was used by multiple fish species, with American Shad, Gizzard Shad, and even a few Flathead Catfish migrating to Atkinson Mill Dam. Quality American Shad spawning habitat was noted throughout the Little River. Their use of upstream restored habitat declined in a linear fashion. However, there was a sharp decline at the Notch Dam located at River Kilometer 7. Around 25% of tagged American Shad did not pass, and others experienced delayed migrations. Notch Dam passage was more common and rapid during high flow events, compared to less passage and longer delays during low flow. Migration delays are a concern for American Shad, as wasted energy may lead to higher spawning mortality, and it makes them more vulnerable to predation by flathead catfish. Flathead catfish are an introduced species in North Carolina, and in the Little River, we captured large individuals and an increasing number each year. Fishwear, pit tags, and antennas allow us to study numerous individuals and species. Migratory fish are using habitat restored by dam removals. Flow was very important, influencing their migrations and passage at a partial dam removal. Also, predation by introduced flathead catfish is a concern. Mm -hmm.